Hello, folks. So welcome back to our show this morning. And of course, uh, we are in the mark for our first talk show of the day. Let me ask you first, though, P. How many languages do you speak? Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> two. Uh, I don't know. Even my bahasa is still a little bit uh, wobbly from time to time. But yes, at least two. No, it's getting better, though, than it's the first time that I knew you a decade ago. <laughs> now, did you know there's a term for people who are fluent in many languages? They are called polyglots. That's right, and there's something new to me as well. Now, joining us today is Erdipa Wiratama from Polyglot Indonesia. Good morning, Deepa. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Us Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. So, my first, our first question, yeah, of course. how many languages do you speak? Well, oh, good enough, five officially, but I'm uh, currently lear learning a sixth one. So in, ter in terms of proficiency, I would say the first one would be French, okay. English obviously, Indonesian only in third position, and then my Persian is quite good, okay. German, and I'm learning Spanish. Spanish. All right. Wow, okay. So we want, of course, for you to introduce yourself in all those languages, please. <laughs> all those languages. Yes. Okay. So where do I start? We're gonna you know prepare our text so that okay, we know okay, what you're okay. saying. Okay. So uh, oh, I, I think I. Started from French, right? Oh, yeah. French, okay. okay Donc, euh, bonjour à tous, je m'appelle Erdipa, je suis un membre de Polyglot Indonesia. Et ce matin, nous sommes avec euh, le programme See Today News. Uh, oui. Should, yeah. <laughs> should I basically repeat the self in different yes, languages? Yes, like, just continue. Okay, your, okay. Next, your second was... You, German, right? No, the uh, second no. one was... There, there was... Uh, so, the French, uh, English, Indonesian, Persian. Okay, oh yeah, uh, so okay. Persian so, we can, first. we can go to Persian yeah. then. Yeah, Persian, we're just yes. the next two. Okay. So betul bahagian mana di pasta, mahu berusaha membuat baru mesti today news, dan mihoim terbaru yang cantik dan berani harap bezana. Beautiful language. I know it is. It sounds amazing. It's not like it doesn't sound Middle Middle Eastern, and it was like one of the few cultural things that I had to like realize because I was expecting like something like really Middle Eastern. Right. Turns out it's like a little bit more exotic, you know. Okay. So what is that? What is German? Right. Next. German. German. We'll do German. Okay, guten Tag, guten Morgen. Ich bin Erdi Paviratama und wir sind mit dem uh, Televisionsprogramm See to the News. Und uh, heute uh, wir sprechen uh, about Polyglot. My German is kind of worse. That's okay. okay. Hey, I mean, it's only your fifth best language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done, well done. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Now, a little bit of Spanish, buenos dias. Yeah, hey, buenos dias. Nice. Soy Erdipa y uh, hoy. Um, Somos co co con la tele, te, el programa de televisión Situ de Turi News y hoy uh, hablamos uh, desde Polyglot. Ah. So you're quite proficient, but you're just still learning. In I, do, I, 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 do, I still do mistakes, like you said, in Bahasa and yeah. English. We, we all do like micro mistakes okay. throughout the day, but it's like those little mistakes that kind of uh, can, can propel you forward anyway. So it's... Uh, you, of course. When learning a language, people are always like discouraged about making making language or sounding dumb, like I just did literally a few seconds like ago. Like making mistakes, basically, yeah. Yeah, right? It, but it's like those little things that kind of like one cement your confidence, and two, you don't make you don't get get better without getting, making mistakes. So it's a natural process that you right. should absolutely not be embarrassed about. I, this yeah. is how I learned Bahasa I Indonesia, by the way. When I first moved here, I met some friends who wanted to speak English and mm -hmm. learn to speak English. I said, like, let's make a deal. You speak to me in English. And it can be broken English. I don't care. They're yeah, like, yeah, but right. I'll make mistakes. I'm like, I don't care. I'll fix your mistakes and you fix yes. mine. And we would have this like broken conversation, but we got better over time. No, that, that, that's, that's the thing because that's basically how I lear how learned to be confident in speaking language. Because basically, um, I was stuck in that mindset like, okay, I had a, a basic, a, a base of Persian when I was in Iran, but that was like um, too uh, like malu malu, too ashamed to, to, to speak to people and be like, no, it's okay. Go ahead. You you speak like however you feel like it. Make all the mistakes you want, and we'll help you. And that's what actually like um, like pushed me pushed me forward. Right. You know. So it is a good to way to accelerate. Learn. Absolutely. Yourself. The environment, how you perceive yourself, how yes. where you want to go. It's all like mental factors mm -hmm. that contribute to how how far you can learn. Actually. Yeah. And not only languages, everything basically. That's right. right. No, Masi, but I just want to ask. I mean, if people know your background, they're like, of course he knows all these languages mm. because he's been living abroad most of his life. Mm. But it's not as easy, though, right, for one to kind of learn the language. Just because you live in a different country exactly. doesn't mean you pick up the language. Right, you need right? to make that effort for you that's to the learn. That's the thing. That, that's the thing. And um, it, it is something I see a lot where the, I've heard people like living upwards to 10, 15 years but still have very broken lo yes. like a local language. Mm -hmm. Whereas you have students who, who study for like three years and because of their 
outgoing nature or maybe like they practice it more on a daily basis, they basically will be, be, become fluent. So there is the learning the L language challenge, which is, in my opinion, flat out um, the same for everybody. Yeah. But then there is uh, cultural absorption, uh, yeah. um, how you're how you change as a person yeah. with, with, with all, all, all that. And it doesn't have to be, um, for example, in Spanish, it doesn't have to be living in Spain or like working in Spain. If you learn Spanish in, in, in Indonesia, you have to have a media that kind of like uh, keep the gears turning. Okay. Mm -hmm. For example? Books, movies, series, subtitles on, your settings on your phone. Yes. Telenovela. Telenovela, <laughs> obviously. All right. And so like factor that to keep the gears turning yeah. and because of the, the movie, the book whatsoever, you're also absorb, uh, absorbing a little bit of the culture. Very right. true. Right, yeah. yeah. By the way, I had a friend from Bandung, perfect English, never spent a day set foot outside Indonesia. Really? I asked, how did you learn uh, your English? He's like, through friends. Ah, oh, your friends and subtitles. That's, yeah. Yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> like uh, one of the more per, 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 uh, well-known, uh, not polyglots, but multilinguists here, like the singer rapper Rich Brian. Yes. Yeah. In English only by YouTube. Never, right. never said that before that. No. One of the um, most uh, well-known um, uh, hyperpolyglots in Indonesia. Very young girl, uh, piece, uh, uh, rest, rest in peace. 14 languages, never never spent a day outside of Indonesia. Wow. 14, all via the wonders of internet. Right. Okay. So, so you were calling her hyperpolyglot? Hyperpolyglot. So hyperpolyglot. Hyperpolyglot. So there, are, there is bilingual. Okay, yes. Trilingual, which is still polyglot, but you know, beyond three is polyglot, and I think it's seven or eight, you can be considered a hyper polyglot. Oh, wow. You're Amazing. well on your way there. By the way, real, real quick, I've always wondered so, in this case, when you have multiple languages that you mm -hmm. can speak, what are your pro what are your your thought process like? Are you that's processing a, in one certain language? That's an amazing question. Uh, it depends. Okay. I, I have dreamed in four, uh, four of my th uh, six languages, so that's uh, Indonesian, English, French, and Persian. Mm -hmm. When I'm by myself, when I mumble, when I cook, when I drive, right. French comes out like the, with the least resistance. Okay. Sometimes English as well, but uh, it depends. It's kind of like they, they're basically like racing to the top position every time. But okay. yeah, English and French. But, uh, be and uh, yeah, so it's... When you're angry? Like, yeah, French, I, I was going to say, when you're in a stressful right. position, that's when you're real angry. And, and yeah. my people will be calling me. I was like, are you mad? Or are you, like, <laughs> saying sweet words to me as of right now? Oh. Like, I would understand what you're saying. No, it's like, uh, <laughs> I, I, I realize, like, when, I'm, when my patience is, be, is being challenged by the tra Jakarta traffic and nobody's next besides me to yeah. hold me down, yeah. oh, swearing is French. <laughs> swearing in French <laughs> is absolutely <laughs> sweet. <laughs> It flows out of the tongue. It's like you can't kind of feel happy afterwards, you know. I always compare it to like, if you stub your toe, what's the first word that comes out of your mouth? Is right. it English? Is it Indonesian? Yeah, yeah. Is it any other language? That, that's your natural. And that's basically like, oh, you just gave us a glimpse of your inner person. Yeah. <laughs> you be careful. All right. So it's Monsieur Deepa then, I yes. guess. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the community. Yeah. So there is an Indonesian polyglot community. Yes. In fact, I just looked it up. There is a. Uh, Polyglot Indonesia is yes. the Instagram as well. Yep. Um, so tell us a little bit about this. Yes, please. Okay, so uh, obviously Polyglot Indonesia is the uh, linguistic oriented um, community. We, I mean, we, we uh, it started about 10 years ago, 2013, and it's still going strong right now. Uh, we expanded, I mean, there's like multiple communities like Spruce is Spewing. It started in Jakarta, but now we have in Aceh, Palembang, oh. uh, Bandung, Surabaya, uh, Semalang, uh, but then Pasar and even Mataram, mm -hmm. and I probably sk 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 skipped a few. So there is, as uh, communities pop out all throughout Indonesia, there is definitely an interest in learning uh, new foreign languages, mm -hmm. professional, acad academic, cultural. The interest is there, and it's growing. So we, we see because we are, um, Polyglot Indonesia is maintained by um, uh, a few hundreds of volunteers across the city, but very uh, a, a lot of very enthusiastic like. Near thousands of members. People are regularly uh, here during our events and stuff like that. So yeah, our main focus is in languages, the the, uh, the application of languages, how it changes your life, and uh, not only it's a lear lear learning platform, but for me personally, it was um, also uh, kind of like finding back my family because I it's uh, I that's how I you know people who understand the woes of like. Uh, 
having multiple identities with related to language. So that's where I found like, oh, I'm not alone. Hello. What, what are the woes? I mean, we know all the benefits. Yeah. But what would be like one of the downsides? I mean, do you feel like it's hard to call a certain place home because there's so many of the, the places that you've been to? On point. Uh, yeah. What is home <laughs> to me? Right. It's definitely, uh, I mean, it's here, but the heart says otherwise. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of identity crisis, especially when you grow up. You kind of like question yourself. I look Indonesian. I'm, 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 my face and my name is very Japanese. But my closest friend, my closest Indonesian friends are like, you're a bullet. You're not. Yeah. <laughs> really. The inner, the yeah, mindset so, and everything. So, so, so there's an internal struggle. But it's being overshadowed by the many benefits, obviously. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting perspective. So, I mean, from languages, you think that do you see the world kind of in a different spectrum because yes. you know you learn these yes, different yeah. kind of languages, either people like you and yourself? So, besides the language being a media of communication of like transferring uh, information from one point to, to another, it's also some people will say it's a window to a certain certain culture. But with a little bit of courage, I would also say that it's a bridge. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for example, what I felt wh when I learned Persian was la was um, not only was it a window for me to understand no culture, it was also me giving myself, giving access to that language to change me. Mm -hmm. oh. There are certain like, there's certain things I do today is because it's the influence from from Iran actually where I learned Persian, like, like little like ha habit things. So I'm like saying doing this like it's not right. an Indian thing, but it's like a very Persian thing to be like oh I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, hope, uh, all the best, I uh, hope you're okay, and stuff like that. And it's like very little micro uh, behaviors that kind of like, um, that you get from picking left or right. It's very true. I, I got a story to share. When yeah. I first moved to Indonesia, I started taking the train. But I used to commute between Jakarta and Bandung. Yes. And there was a gentleman beside me, and he ordered food. I did not. And I, I thought it was weird because he, he I was I had my headphones on, and he called me. I took off my headphones. Yeah. It's like, I'm about to eat. I'm like... Okay, <laughs> weird. Enjoy. <laughs> but apparently that's a custom. And yeah. now, nowadays, me learning the language, I've picked up that custom. So now when I'm around mm -hmm. people and I'm about to eat, it's like a politeness thing. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. I'm about to eat dinner. And yeah. It's like, okay, and like, go ahead. So right? yeah, so, 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 yeah, so, something like that. So, so yeah, and so basically the culture is be becoming an extent of the, uh, no, I'm, I, I mean, the language is an extent of the culture. Very much so. I so agree. when you learn a language, whether you like it or not, you're going to pick something of cultural value from that language. Right. So multiple languages. Now that you're learning, like, I know some languages do have similarities. For example, like if you're learning Spanish, if you already know how to speak Italian, for example, like the Latin languages, then it's a little bit easier, I assume, to learn the other one. However, yeah. does it get more difficult the more languages you learn? Because there's just more vocabulary. There's more rules that you have to, to listen. Do, do you ever mix them up? What I felt was, and I'm going to refer back to uh, Persian because that's the last language I learned seriously. Okay. Is that you, as as you absorb more languages, you become more sensible to like the different intricacies between uh, languages. For example, I realized that um, uh, in in the verbs, how you use the verbs, it's very it's similar. Like the tenses mm -hmm. was like, oh, the, the the Persians use tenses somewhat like the French do. Mm -hmm. So it was like a, a point of familiarity that that I kind of like recognize uh, st straight on. So you're becoming more and more res, um, receptive that different languages work different ways. Right. So you, you're, you're not you're not phased by that anymore. Okay. On the contrary, you're yeah. you're receptive towards it. So as you learn more language, more vocab, it kind of like it's just more uh, variety to enjoy, basically. Okay. okay. And I think because it's just different, like in a lot of people saying uh, speaking or learning Bahasa Indonesia is mm. quite easy because mm. we don't have the female male kind yeah. of like like French, you have the mm. male and female one not. So I guess every language is, is different, right? Yeah, yeah. In, in terms of how you learn the language Absolutely. itself. Absolutely. Now, um, we know that in Indonesia, we have many native languages. Yeah. So if let's say I could speak Sundanese, Javanese, I could do Padang, uh, uh, Mino, or like you said, Pad uh, Padangese, or is that, can I call myself a polyglot? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Is that, is that not a dialect? No. No, because no, it's a different language. It's a legit language that stands on its own with its own cultural value. And right. all different. So and it's, like, it's not only the, 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 the dialect is basically a, a, a core language that kind of spans out. When you talk about Minang, uh, Javanese, they, they stand on their own. Okay, it's completely different. They're not related to what so it's a language. So you can be a, a polyglot, but knowing only uh, local languages. Right. Legit. 
And it's already there. I mean, there are so many languages yeah. that we can really choose from from Indonesia yeah. itself. Agreed. So what would you have, like, maybe perhaps some tips for those that are planning to learn? It's just, it seems yeah. like a huge undertaking. And usually yeah. people said that once you're a child, it's much more easier for of you course. to adapt language, right? Yeah. Do you think this is a myth or <laughs> this is actually think, fact? I think the reason why, so there's, a, there, there, there's, there's actually a study that says that age does not really truly matter. And the reason why we have this perception that kids learn easier is because they don't think as much as adults do. Yeah, less in their brain. So they're just, you know, you, you can throw a seven-year-old into class and be like, but at the end of the week he learns French because what the hell's he gonna do? <laughs> but True. when we are being like put in a, 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 in a language class, besides having jobs or lives to, to decide, yeah. we're like, we're intimidated by the idea of like having to be put in this vulnerable position where you don't know anything. That's true. And we're bothered by that. And I think that's the mental barrier. And it's, and it's um, multiplied by this a certain Indonesian mindset that again, malu malu, you don't, you don't, you, you, don't, you don't like things that, that are way outside of your comfort zone. But it's a mental barrier that if you, if you brutally push down, I think it's, it's beneficial. Thing. And by the way, kids, kids also aren't afraid of making mistakes. So if they say something wrong, they, they don't, don't care, right? They don't think as yeah, much. Exactly. We think too much. <laughs> <laughs> Gangsy, we call it. Yeah, gangsy. yeah, yeah. So, uh, Deepa, thank you so much. If you guys are willing to learn more, uh, you guys can check out their community as well, uh, www.polyglotindonesia.org, or just check out their Instagram under the same name. Thank you for coming by. Real quick question before we go. I know we're running out of time. What's the third, because it's three languages to be a polyglot. Yeah. Most people, I assume, part of the community know English and, and Bahasa. Yeah. What's the third most common language that you know people know? French and German. French and German. You yeah. should brush up your French. I should. Yes, you yeah. will. High school was a long time away, <laughs> so yeah. One <laughs> micro point left. It is a somewhat of a mistake to refer to Indonesian as Bahasa because that's Bahasa means language in Indonesian. Means language, correct. It's a so language. it would be like you just say Indonesian, Indonesian. simply. Oh, Thank you for that. okay. Oh, we felt that way too, but yeah. I just kind of follow what everybody. Yeah. Else. yeah. Thanks for correcting. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, Deepa, it's been great to chat with you. Wish we had more time, My but pleasure. we do have to take another short break. But when we return, in case you joined us late, we'll recap some of our earlier stories from around the world when we return. Stay tuned. Say that in Canadian, please. <laughs> <laughs>